Umbra, thank you so much for making time for being on the show today. Um, I've been listening to you guys uh, since I um, played you guys on my radio show. And you know what? Um, I see how hard you guys are working, and I had to ask you to be on. Thank you. All right, cool, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I see how hard you're working as well. I always see your, um, your, um, interviewing some new guests or um, um, you're always posting a new show uh, on Facebook. You know? Yeah. Hey, you, you know how hard that grind is, man? You got to keep going, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, it, it's all baby steps, but eventually, you know, it turns into that big step. So um, I have a ton of questions about what you guys have been doing. But one thing I like to ask first is a little bit about um, the history of the band and how the band started. So first of all, I want to know, uh, before we get into the history, it's um, what's the meaning behind your band name, uh, Verge of Umbra? Yeah. All right. Um, you, you want to do it here? Yeah. Bro, go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, okay, I could start it off. Yeah. Um, uh, Umbra is shadow. And um, when you say that you're on the verge of um, when you're, when you're on that shadow, you're on the verge of light or you're on the verge of darkness. Um, it, it speaks about like the duality and nature, um, light, dark, good, bad, you know, and, and that's the type of stuff we talk about in the music, the, just the duality and nature, duality and light. Dude, I love that. I love that. So tell me a little bit about how uh, Verge of Umbra came to be, because, you know, I noticed a lot of... Uh, uh, rap, I noticed some reggae, and of course, I noticed some metal. Tell me um, how the band decided to start a project like this, and when did it start? Uh, it started, um, I think it, it's about like six years now, um, oh, about six years. And um, it was um, myself, Andres Pineda, Lowell Gillette, um, and um, G Box, Gerald um, Giovannis. And we started out, we knew each other from college and then we eventually came back together as, uh, you know, as, as adults. And um, we said we wanted to start a project together. And I was, my first love was always hip hop. Then I got more into metal. And Nello's uh, first love was um, um, reggae. And Andres and Lowell and um, um, G-Box, their first love was always metal. So we came together to see how we could do a project together and started Verge. And then later on, um, Faith became our, our, our drummer and he could tell you about his influences and what he brought to the band, no? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, would, I would love to hear that, Faith. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was an interesting meeting. Um, actually, what had happened was um, <laughs> the guys had seen me uh, play jam with a couple other friends of ours, and um, like they apparently liked whatever it is I was doing. And you know, they asked at the time, given the way things had been set up or the way things were evolving, you know, um, they had the space to bring in someone new, so to speak, in the capacity of a drummer. So um, when they saw me, they were like, yeah, um, would you, you know, like to come check out what we're doing, come and see, you know, where you can fit in. And um, yeah, that has been it from that time up until now. <laughs> well, well, you said that um, one of your first influences is reggae, right? Um, for me, it's hip hop. For me, my hip -hop. First, yeah. And for Faith, it was... Yeah, for me, it, it's been, um, huh. Like I, I would, I would more or less refer to myself as um, a music person, but I, yeah, yeah. it start, it start <laughs> and that sounds super vague. But to boil it down, like uh, it started out with rock, you know, um, the first intro to this world of rock and metal and all its um, genre bending aspects. Um, was with Linkin Park. So it started there and, you know, I got some Breaking Benjamin. So, you know, that was all rock, all hard rock. But then I kind of went to the flip side and I discovered Nightwish, you know, which was symphonic metal and then heard some um, Demo way back then, you know, got into some Divine Heresy. So like I've been like ping-ponging back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and they finally hit Ultra Bridge and Lamb of God, and then most recently, fucking Gojira. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been all over the place, man. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome, Faith. It's funny you say that about Nightwish because uh, I'm a massive Nightwish fan. I, I got oh, vinyl. No, no. Got no. Oh, 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 you got vinyl. Goddamn, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and, and I'm a massive Demu fan. So, okay. actually, okay. yeah, my, my first big interview I ever got on my show was uh, Selenos, the guitar player. Okay. Okay. So, I, I, love, your, I love your inspirations, man. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, one thing I want to get into that I absolutely love about your music is um, all of your lyrics behind your uh, your songs. So songs like um, Burn the Ocean, uh, Chaos Sequence, you know, it seems like you guys are always singing about, um, you know, positive messages and, and ways we can better society, better the world and how we can come as a whole. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit behind your inspiration, um, singing about topics like that? Uh, I think I feel a bit of, um, social responsibility. You know, um, I remember one time there was an interview with, um, uh, run DMC, right. And one of them was like, man, we we are the hardest partiers in the world. Nobody parties harder than us. Nobody drinks harder than us. But you don't see it. You don't see it in our music. You know what I mean? They they always put out positive music. So um, it's a it's a like a social responsibility type of thing. You know? <laughs> no, I, absolutely, man. And um, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was listening to the chaos sequence. It seemed like uh, the video you did, it was kind of like about a kid trying to run away from violence or trying to run away from, like, uh, you know, being inspired to go down, like, a dark path. Is that similar of what the video was about? You know, we like to leave that stuff to interpretation. And people okay, always, like yeah, people always ask, um, what, was in the, what was in the little um, the, 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 um, the container? And there was nothing in the container. <laughs> yeah, well, like, you tell me. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe you know something I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just to show um a, a cycle how it just how life just goes around and round and round. You know. <laughs> I, I like it, man. I like it. So um, I noticed Jenko that um, you work a lot with like production, right? And like in like video and music videos and all that. Yes, 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 yes. So is, is that something? Is that something that you picked up in college? Uh, uh no, it's something that I picked up after, after, um, after wanting to, to like things not moving at the speed I wanted to. Like I learned to record myself because, um, you know, the the the, the amount of money you have to put into studio time. I rather just buy the equipment myself, and then um. When shooting a video, the the, the guy, the, the cameraman doesn't have the same vision that I have, that I want out of the project. So I, I learned to shoot myself. Necessity being the mother of invention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is great, man. So, um, Django, have you been shooting all the videos for Birds of Umbra? Yes, yes, pretty much. Yep. So, so what happens when you have to shoot a scene with you in it? You, does somebody else have to man the camera? Yep, yep, yeah. These guys man the camera as well, yeah. <laughs> Face the camera, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have to so, um, so you guys said that, that you met in college, right? You, uh, you and Faith? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Faith, um, Faith is uh, when I came back from, from the U.S., and we were together for like what? Uh, that was about two years, and then Faith came in. I think it's two years or so. Then Faith came in. So not from college. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other guys I knew from um, from college. Uh, while I was in St. John's College and Wesley College, I knew Andres and Lowell and um, Gerald. I, I like it, man. <laughs> I like it. So one thing I stumbled upon when looking into uh, Verge of Umbra, which I thought was absolutely amazing is that you guys played at Bakkenfest. Yes. You guys did a battle of the bands and played at Bakkenfest, and it totally, like, blew my mind. Not because I didn't think you guys were amazing, but just because I didn't know, you know? 
and, and, and all around and all around California, Oregon, Washington, the West Coast, there's all like these battle of the bands. Um, tell me a little bit um, of what you had to go through to get your band on that festival. What if it? Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> it's it still almost gives um, gives me shivers uh, thinking about it. Um, it started out as an idea. But, um, you know, it's one of those ideas that you jump on and it just takes you like you just hang on for dear life and I can hope you don't break your neck, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it started out uh, as an idea. And, you know, we we had just a little time to float it amongst ourselves. But then um, things started falling into place, um, be it. Uh, let me see uh, the actual uh be it getting the belizean representation and then you know once that had been secured and you know we could begin seeing our path there in terms of i don't know um the funding and stuff then you know we just kind of went along for the ride and um yeah so like every step of the way because you know going to Working for us, like it's it's a whole new thing, like it's a whole new level, a whole new setting. So, like every stage, as you surpass every stage of whatever is required, you know, be it you know getting your passports or you know getting that much needed moolah, you know, from people kind enough to um, support and whatever. Like every stage felt like, <gasps> okay, we're actually doing this, you know, all up until we actually um, got up onto that stage to play. So like it, it it wasn't anything way too premeditated, but you know it was something that we knew we had every capability of doing, and you know we felt fuck it, it'd be nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> how how many how many rounds of doing battle of the bands did you have to do until you got to the Vakken Fest? Uh, it was actually, I'd say two. Um, I mean. Uh, I, I would come at this from my side of what had happened that night because um, after, you know, we, well, after it was established that we were the representatives from Belize, um, the next battle was the regional battle. So, you know, you had bands from Nicaragua, El Salvador, Panama, and Costa Rica coming in, plus us, you know. So, wow. um, yeah. So, and there's always this thing, you know, since we don't exactly know these guys, at least for me, you know, in my mind, so long as I don't know this band, they're probably practicing 64 hours a day, 289 days out of an entire month, you know, they're doing all that. So with all of those nerves, um, we finally get up on stage. And uh, again, I'm speaking for me, like, I I felt it, it was so nerve wracking because, you know, this was it. You know, if we pass this, we is going to Germany. If we don't, we are going back to, you know, Belize. I mean, it was good, but, you know, we did want Germany. So I remember after we finished playing, you know, I, I, I felt a way about it. And, you know, I wasn't sure my personal performance would have been enough um, to contribute to pushing the band to, um, to actually get to Germany. Because I've always had this notion that this band, apart from myself, you know, should be way up there. You know, so I, after playing, I was like, you know what, screw it. I gave it my all. I don't want to hear the results because I don't like being disappointed. So I went to my <laughs> hotel room. I'm like, fuck this. Fuck y'all. I'm done. <laughs> so I went back to the hotel room and I slept. And it wasn't until like around two, three in the morning that um, uh, our, our Belizean manager, let me um, put it this way, our Belizean connect who got us into this whole thing, he comes and he's, you know, nudging me awake. He's like, whoa, you know, you guys did it. You're going to Germany, you know? <laughs> and um, yeah, and I remember, I know, I remember, I remember the morning after, um, well, the, um, later on in the morning, like around seven, eight, when we were having breakfast, it was the quietest time I have ever seen the group of guys around me. Because then it finally was sinking in, you know? Like they were eating their oranges really, really quietly, munching down on the waffle. <laughs> Really quietly, you know, <laughs> like nobody, <laughs> like nobody 
say anything to extend it, you know? Like every few seconds, you hear somebody say, why, we're going to Germany, you know? And we like masticate that knowledge, you know? But yeah, that, that was it. Um, we, um, we beat the, the Belizean part of things and, you know, we made it out of the regional competition. And then, you know, we went to Germany itself. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. I, I, I super amazing. Uh, I'm going to get this next question over to Jenko. Cool. So, uh, Jenko, um, when you guys um, went to Germany, um, how was the setup of the whole show? And, and explain to me a little bit about, like, the sound check. And uh, before hitting that stage, wh um, what are the preparations you went through that was a little different than doing things um, around your area? Uh, I could say uh, a, a level of professionalism and um, the type of equipment. This, the type of equipment they had there was, like, you know, top of the line. And yeah, the good shit. Yep. Yeah. Was, <laughs> that, that good shit. <laughs> And um, the what I remember, what the, the curtain was closed, and we could you know see out, we could see um through the curtain from the side that everybody was there. We got to we, the sound check was um the, the sound check was quick, right? Right? Yeah, quick. yeah, very quick. quick yeah, because there were yeah. multiple bands, and mm -hmm. you know we're, we're we're not the stars of the show or anything yeah. like that. We're just another band playing. Um, but the guys were super professional. They helped us with our equipment and everything. So. Yeah, it, it was great. I don't know if you wanted like more details as to like what type of Sennheisers they had. Or, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? yeah. Now, like, like I mean, for me, yeah, the one thing that impressed me was both how professional and how quick it is. You know, because um, again, like these guys, like they have a whole long program, and you know, there's a whole lot going on, a whole lot of moving parts, and like the longer it takes, the more chances of things deviating from their program. So it was like this, like come in, and you know, it was my first time being asked what I'm gonna use on stage. You know, like I had to sit down, and people were asking me, "Is this Tom good? Is this good?" And you know, I had what was it? Analysis paralysis almost, like. So many times, like, how do I even, like, what is happening, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. And, like, I would have, um, I would say I needed something, and immediately it'd be put out, mic set up, bam, 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 it's done, and you're in that stage, and for me, I'm sitting on the drum throne, and the curtain is so far from you, and it's so tall, and you can hear, and you can feel the amount of people just waiting, a few pieces of fabric away to hear you play. Man, <laughs> a different ball game, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, were you guys pretty comfortable um, once the curtain dropped, and um, um, were you guys pretty comfortable with like the levels and all that? Did you guys hear each other pretty well? Yeah, it was pretty. Um, it was pretty. Um, yeah, we could hear each other. Um, you had any problems, fit for me? I, no. No, not not really. No, I no, think, it, I think um, a couple of times. I, I'm not sure. I think um, um, they had to stay close to the um, to the monitors because we yeah. didn't have um, we didn't have any in here, so we had to stay close to the monitors to to really hear what was going on. You know. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So, um, did you guys get to stay for the entire festival? Uh, we stayed. What um, what day did we leave? We left on a on a Sunday. We yeah. came in on a. We came in on a what? What was it? Thursday, and then left on Sunday. I'm yeah, sure. a bit more than that actually. And it was going on well before then, and and, and after. Yeah, that. and well after. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. That that's still a, a, a total dream come true. Yeah. Um, did you guys learn any lessons from playing a big show that like that, and you carried over to what you're doing now? <laughs> Oh yeah, um, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of lessons. Um, the first being, uh, regardless of where you're at, like make sure you know exactly what it is that you need and what it is that you need to get the sound that you want. Because after the show is done, is more than too late for you to go back and be like, you know what, I could have used this or, you know, um, I could have done this or done that, you know, make sure you have whatever your prep process is, make sure all of that shit is down pat, right? And then 
you know, make sure that you know what it is that you're doing. Like you are super, super, super confident on that stage. Um, I thought it was interesting because like the dynamic going from what we were used to to what we were exposed to on that stage, like it's like a fucking abyss. It's like a chasm between them both. Right. Um, just from the number of people you have to play for alone. Like I said, I mean, it's one thing playing in front of people where you can see literally everybody from one end of the room to the other. And then it's one thing when that curtain opens and you see that massive amount of people, all those eyes staring at you. So like you have to be super, super in control of yourself <laughs> and in control of your nerves and make sure you just don't lose your shit for one second. <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, something that does carry over um, is that uh, I learned that what, what, what got fortified was that no matter where you go, just play hard. Just give it your all, you know? Yeah. I, I like it. I like it, man. So, of course, you know, um, we've been uh, in quarantine with this whole COVID situation. Um, what has the band been doing during all this downtime before we're allowed to play shows again? What's it, Jinko? Well, just, um, just this past Saturday, Keith came by to record drums for uh, Heresy Fest. It's a, a Costa Rica um, metal festival. But, you know, since COVID, they're doing it all online. So we are doing our, our, our section of the, um, of the show. And Faith recorded his drums. I'm going to record my vocals um, probably tomorrow. And um, I'm getting um, bass from Dina. And then we're just going to combine those videos and present it to Heresy Fest as this is Verge of Umbra, you know? Yeah. This is Virgin Bumba live. Well, pre-recorded live. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we've been doing. And also we've been, um, I've been um, recording vocals for the rest of the songs. And we should be releasing um, another single, hopefully um, on January the 1st. That's great, man. Yeah. That's great. I absolutely love it. So guys, um, we're going to get into the second part of the interview. I'm going to ask each of you five questions, and you have a minute or less to answer each question. Jacob and Faith, are you ready? Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll start with you, Faith. Okay. Um, it, if you could have any theme music for yourself when you walk into any room, what, what would your theme music be? Crap. Um, <laughs> 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 okay. I'm going with Alter Bridges, Metalingus. I like it. I like it. I, how about for you, Jinko? If you could have a theme music when you walk into any room, what would that be? Uh, Prodigy Firestarter. <laughs> Firestarter? Yeah. I, I like it, man. I like it. All right. Uh, we'll start with you now, Jenko. In a zombie apocalypse, you only can have one weapon to kill zombies. What is that one weapon? Uh, axe. An axe? All right, Faith. Same question for you, man. An AK-47. That shit works in the snow, in the rain, in the hell, in the heaven. It works everywhere. <laughs> and from a distance, too. All right. Sounds good. All right. Now we're going to start with uh, you, Faith. If you could know the truth about uh -huh. anything in the world, what, what truth would that be? Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be it. Just why? Uh, why? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> what, 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 what about you, Janko? If you could know the absolute truth about anything, what would it be? Uh, why? I, I agree. I completely agree with Faith. Um, why are we here? What, what's, what, what is this about? You know? <laughs> what is our existence about? Oh, okay. Yeah, I like it, man. I like it. All right, Janko, we're going to start with you. If, if you could, if you could uh, play with any band... In any era, for one set, what band would that be? Uh, I played Rage. <laughs> Rage? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Faith? If you could play drums for any band in any era for one set, what would that be? Nightwish. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Um, if, uh, this is a question for both of you guys at the same time. Okay. If you guys were on a deserted island, 
Who do you think's the first band member you guys would eat? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Oh my gosh. Um, Jake, I'm going to see the floor to you on this one. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, actually they, they, they eat me because I go first, you know? I go first. I'd be like, I'm not fucking with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like hey, it, guys. Uh, I like hey. it. Um, all right. All right, I'm, I'm actually going to throw two more questions with, at you guys. I'm going to start with uh, Jenko. Jenko, what is one artist that you really like that, that a lot of other people don't like? I'm lost. And, and, and this is for both of you guys. So okay. if you guys want to say, you can say pass if you want. Yeah, okay. we're pass. <laughs> 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 uh, that a lot of people don't like. Wow. Oh, Limb Biscuit. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Good yeah. answer. Good answer. I like them too. <laughs> um, right, right Jenko, you got extra time. Do you have an answer? I can't think of. <laughs> What's going to happen is after this whole interview, I'm, I'm going to be like, oh, shit, you know. Um, I know a band, you know. But I it should have been those guys. <laughs> yeah, I should have said those guys. <laughs> yeah. But I, I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> all right, all right, no worries. Um, we'll say, uh, uh, we'll leave this with the final question. Uh, this is a super easy question. Mm -hmm. What is one food you think is disgusting, Jacob? What's what? What is one food that you think is disgusting, gross? Um, I think, um, what, what was it? Um, um, I think it was um, uh, goat brain. Goat brain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't think I've ever tried that. Manishwata goat head. <laughs> <laughs> goat head soup. I, right. I don't think I'm going to. Um, yeah. Um, it'll be worms. Worms? Uh, fried. Is that yeah. Worms. Yeah. Meal worms. <laughs> Is that, is that something people eat where you're from? Yeah, it's it's a delicacy in certain cultures. Yeah. It started <laughs> out as a hard time thing, and then people just started doing it for fun, and I'm like, nah, get that shit out. Mm -mm, not cool, no. <laughs> no. Well, well, hey, uh, Faith, Jenko, uh, yeah. I want you to think, I want to thank all of you so much for being on my show. It's a pleasure. I thank cannot you, wait man. to hear this. You guys have been nice. Um, talking you. about your walking experience gave me the goosebumps. And um, it was great talking to you, and I hope both of you have a great night. Thank right. you. Thank you, you too, bro. I appreciate it very much. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Say how about this? How about this? One last ah. thing. Ah. Um, is there a shout out to anybody that you want to give before we end the interview? Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I want to give a shout out to all the members of Verge um, for allowing me into the band and keeping up with me. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jenko? Yeah, um, special shout out to um, Andres and his family going through some stuff right now, you know. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, love and respect to them and uh, uh, just um, good vibes towards what they're going through right now, no? Yeah. Second guy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, guys. All right, guys, you have a beautiful night. Virgil Vambra. Peace out, my brothers. DJ Rambo. Respect. <laughs> Peace. <We're> out. <laughs>